good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we need to take another look at Jirachi. Now, don't get me wrong, right? We did a video about Jirachi. When Jirachi got revealed, we did a video about it. I showed you what it did. But kind of like with Alolan Ninetales GX, in the time between that video coming out and the card being able to be used over in Japan, it has become really, really clear that Jirachi is not just a kind of good card that could be good in some decks. It is, in fact, a phenomenal card that is seeing a huge amount of play in a number of different decks. So I think we need to take another look at Jirachi, but this time... Kind of acknowledge how over-the-top, brokenly good it is. Now, our translation does come from the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessTCG.com slash translations. And essentially, the attack is garbage and we don't care. And pretty much everything else, apart from the ability, is, is kind of garbage and we don't really care. Even the fact that it's got 70 HP is actually really annoying because it means that you cannot use Professor Elm's lecture to search it out. This is all rather annoying, but it's got an ability which is far from annoying. The ability says that once during your turn, if this is your active Pokemon, you may look at the top five cards of your deck, choose one, train a card you find there, reveal it and put it into your hand, shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck, and then Jirachi goes to sleep. It is literally trainer's mail, but with the added bonus of looking at an extra card. And at this stage, some of you will be thinking, well, all right, but then you're asleep and stuck in the active. And others of you will be thinking, well, that's all right. That's why we have a skateboard. And if it wasn't for a skateboard, Jirachi would just be a bit, eh. But the lovely David Hockman who provides our translations has given us this little picture he made of Jirachi, which I think sums the whole thing up rather nicely indeed. Jirachi and a skateboard is a phenomenal combo, which is making decks viable that weren't, and making decks better. And when I did the previous video, it was not terribly popular, and I've not seen a huge amount of people talking about Jirachi. And this is me basically saying, hey, Jirachi is over the top great. It gives consistency, and it's very simple. You have Jirachi in the active, you get a free trainer's mail, and then you retreat it with a skateboard. That's kind of cool. Now, you could wait till your opponent KOs a Pokemon, whack up Jirachi, and then free retreat. You could use a Guzma, which you'll be doing multiple times per game, and then when you do, Whack up Jirachi, use the ability free retreat. A skateboard I should have made a bit clearer lets you retreat when asleep or paralyzed, while also reducing your retreat cost by one, which is literally perfect for Jirachi. But what people are actually doing is they're playing cards like Switch and Escape Rope in their deck so that they can maximize the use of Jirachi. And as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, there is a ridiculous amount to like about Jirachi. So if we look at some of the uses that it has had, just yesterday, assuming this video didn't get bumped for news, which, yeah, that does happen. But if not, just yesterday, we looked at the new Tool Drop deck. This being the Dublade that does 30 damage, for a double colorless energy for every tool on the field. Well, if you're playing a double blade deck, you really need to get tools on the field. Firstly, you want to be attaching tools, so you want an escape board on Jirachi just so it does an extra 30 damage. But secondly, you need to grab all of your tools as fast as possible. And oh, look, Jirachi helps you out beautifully. I mean, hopefully Jirachi gets you an adventure bag so you can, in fact, get two tools rather than one. So that's one really good use we've been seeing here. We also saw it in the Zapdos deck recently. Zapdos is a mildly good attacker, or at least in other formats, would have been a mildly good attacker. It does 80 damage for a single basic energy if you became active this turn. Alright. Oh, and it doesn't hit for weakness either, which kind of sucks. 
That's not amazing, but then you bring in an Electro Power, which means you do an extra 30 damage. And don't forget that in Japan at the moment, they've got Electric Charger, which says that you flip two coins, and for each heads, you put an Electro Charger from your discard back into your deck, so you can use them over and over again. And all of a sudden, Zapdos becomes amazing, but you need to find your Electro Power. And this actually works beautifully with Jirachi, because Zapdos, you need to keep getting it back into the active, and it's got a retreat cost of two. So what you do with Zapdos is you play a bunch of Switch and Escape Rope to get it onto the bench, so you're hitting for 80 rather than 10. And then you put Jirachi active with an escape board, hopefully grab yourself an Electra Charger, and then you're hitting 110 quite nicely. This is what Zapdos does, ladies and gentlemen, and it does it incredibly beautifully. It works wonderfully. The other example we saw here, and you'll notice I'm going for a whole bunch of very different examples, but these are all winning decks that I've profiled on this channel. I'll pop links to all of them in the description. These are all winning decks that are using Jirachi and frankly wouldn't be as good without it. Persimian. I know, right? Persimian's back. And the thing about Persimian is... The, the setup and maintenance of this deck is awkward. You're playing two of one Persimian and two of another Persimian, and you need to basically have all your Persimian in play every turn. So a card like Rescue Stretcher becomes just super over-the-top important. Plus, generally speaking, you're playing double colorless energy and counter energy and no other energy. Which means that you need to search them out. And the best we've got is Energy Lotto. Not perfect. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. And then if there's a special energy there or any energy, put it into your hand. It's the best we've got, ladies and gentlemen. It's the best we've got. But being able to use Jirachi here to search out that Rescue Stretcher, to search out that Energy Lotto is just wonderful. And let's not forget, Persimian is a non-GX deck where you're just going to have Pokemon KO'd over and over and over and over again. You should be giving up five prizes and still be in the game because you've not got any GXs out. So even if you're not playing stuff like Escape Rope or Guzma, which you obviously will be, that still gives you five uses for Jirachi every single game, which is just brilliant. So, most of these we've been talking about non-GX decks. How about a GX deck? How about anything with Ultra Beast? How about Boswell? How about Blacephalon? Now, whether you've got the space to be putting Jirachi and the Skateboard into the deck, I'm going to leave that up to you. But these are decks that rely on having B-String at the optimal time. And sometimes they use the aforementioned Alola Ninetales, but you could use Jirachi here. Because B-String kicks in when your opponent is down to three or four prizes. Which essentially means it kicks in after your opponent takes a prize. You, you see where we're going with this, ladies and gentlemen? You see where we're going with this? So your opponent takes a prize, goes down to three or four prizes remaining, in comes Jirachi, hopefully helps you to find that B-string. Maybe you've got room in your deck, maybe you don't, but it's something to consider. Or maybe you use it to find your Prism Star Stadiums. Things like Thunder Mountain are crazy good, but you can only play one in your deck and they're difficult to search. Jirachi makes it a bit easier. Or maybe you just need a Guzma to win the game. So you put Jirachi active and then maybe you top deck Guzma. But you don't actually need to top deck Guzma because if you top deck a Guzma or you can find it in the top five cards of your deck after that, you win the game. Or maybe you search for an Ultra Ball because you can't find the Guzma and then that gives you a Tapu Lele which wins you the game. Or maybe you get yourself a Pal Pal and you put two more Guzma in and then you use your Orangaroo to draw it. You see where I'm going with this? It's not just these specific uses either. It can just be a consistency boost. It can just help you to find that supporter you need on the turn you need it. Or find a supporter when you don't have one. It's awesome. And one of the big criticisms of this would have been, well, hang on a second, everyone's playing a whole bunch of field blower. Surely the whole Jirachi skateboard thing isn't going to work. Well, actually... 
That's not necessarily the case. There has been a huge drop in the amount of field blower being played lately. A huge drop. And the reason for this, very simply, is... Well, it's twofold. Firstly, Garboda's gone away, so we no longer need it to get rid of Garboda's tool and turn on our abilities. And secondly, Prism Star stadiums like the aforementioned Thunder Mountain are becoming great. And you can't get rid of them with Field Blower, you've got to play your own stadium. So that means that fewer and fewer people are playing Field Blower, which means that something like an escape board is far more likely to stay on the field. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where we really start making hay. I think we're going to start seeing Jirachi as a staple in a whole bunch of different decks. I don't think it's a nice ability that we'll see a little bit of play here and there. I think it's a phenomenal card that's going to see a redonk amount of play. And quite frankly, the second tag team drops. Make sure you get yourself a couple of these. This is going to be a staple. I am sure of it. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think. Do you think Japan is right about Jirachi? Do you think it's only going to be played in a few decks here and there? Or do you think it's just about to become an absolute staple? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that malarkey, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays. We're going to start digging well into Keyforge today. It's a lot of fun. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.